How is it going, my friend? Pleasure. A pleasure seeing you. And thank you for being. Just wanted to jump on here, talk to you, so a good word in, and just, you know, speaking to anybody who is looking for a little inspiration. Hey, Virtuous. Hey, Tamika, what's going on? How's it going, Amber? Appreciate you. Thank you for joining. So, today we had uh, Next Level Speakers. It was really awesome. You know, it was really cool. I enjoyed it. Hey. <laughs> and I just wanted to just throw a few of the nuggets that we were able to take here. Hey, Solomon. <clears throat> What's going on, family? Throw in a few of the nuggets that we took here from uh, today's session. So first we had uh, Jeremy Anderson. He was, you know, the keynote guy. And, you know, he had a lot to say. He had a lot of wisdom, a lot of knowledge, encouragement, and really just drawing his experience from his expertise in his field of public speaking. What's going on? We got Tuche and Jason. Awesome. Much love to y'all. And so um, he talked about how you will be the best investment that you ever make. Not stocks, not cryptocurrency, right? You. You are the single greatest investment that you can make in life. What's going on, Jess? Hey, what's happening, George? And so I thought about that and I was like, wow, that's true. Because you know, there's even been people who have made millions of dollars, lost it all, and then gained it all back. Now, how did they gain it all back? Because they were a millionaire before they got a million dollars. So people say a million dollars doesn't make you a millionaire. It's this. What do we have on the inside? What do we have in our heart, in our minds? It's interesting. People operate on the have, do, be philosophy, thinking that, oh, I must have this in order to do this, in order to be that. We think we reverse it, the backwards law, right? Operating under the be, do, have. First, you must be the person that will naturally or naturally allow you to do the things that allow you to have the things that that type of person has talked about how the world cannot save you. Be free from all doubt and that there is always more. There's always more, you know? So we can understand that we can be content, but not satisfied. It was a certain amount of dissatisfaction that allowed me to push past the barriers and the limits that I didn't even know I had. I didn't even know that, like, not eating was a limitation in that way. Stuff like that. So when you're dissatisfied with life to a certain extent, you will be able to go beyond into the realm of the uncertain, the zone of the unknown. And when you find yourself in that place, it's an interesting place to be. You know, life can give us pressure. You know, they say pressure bursts pipes, but it also makes diamonds. And that the olive, you know, oil comes from the olive. But how do you get oil from the olive? They must be crushed. So sometimes life feels like it's crushing you. Circumstances, situations, events, stress, worry, all this pressure just crushing you, but it's squeezing the oil out of the olive. You're getting, you're extracting, you know? He talked about be dangerous. Don't be timid. Walk with authority. Walk with purpose. Like you've got some place to be, like you are somebody. You know, you ever heard somebody say, who do you think you are? Well, who do you think you're not, right? Isn't that an interesting question? Hey, Gina. He said, we don't hope. 
we decide. Removing that word hope from our vocabulary. Okay, yeah, sure, you can hope for a brighter future, but what if you decided on a brighter future? You could hope for the, for the best and prepare for the worst, but what if you made a decision that you were gonna do what it takes at all costs? Come what may, what if you made a resolve to commit to yourself and to commit to a life worth living for you, a life worthwhile, one that you would enjoy. I heard Tony Robbins once talk about the rocking chair effect. Think of yourself in your mind, close your eyes and imagine yourself in a rocking chair, you know, and you're maybe in your 70s or 80s in this rocking chair, you're just <laughs> just rocking back and forth in this rocking chair, right? What are you thinking about? Are you thinking about all the wonderful things that you did? Are you thinking about all the memories that you made in life? Or are you thinking about the regrets, the things that you left on the table, the things that left you feeling wanting, the things that you never pursued, the things that you never tried, the things that you felt you had it within you to accomplish, but you never even set out. What are you thinking about in that rocking chair? The victories or the victimization? Are you thinking about times when you were exemplary or times when you made excuses? He said, be faithful over a few things and you will rule over many. That was a powerful one for me. Letting us know that we will be blessed with what we can be trusted with. If we are able to be trusted with the small things in life, we are able to be trusted with the big things. He said, people want a Tesla or whatever, a fancy car, right? but they're not even taking care of their Honda Accord. They're not keeping gas in it. They're not changing the oil. They're not changing the spark plugs. They're not taking care of the small things, but they desire the big things. So being faithful over a few, you will rule over many. Operating with the spirit of excellence in life and that the separation comes with the small details, small. Many small things equal the big things. So when you can understand that even in the small details, the small tweaks, those are the big things. Sometimes it's a needle in a haystack that you're looking for. We think we need to take this giant leap, cross this giant chasm in life, but sometimes we just need to take a little step in the right direction. Because it's almost like a small hop in the right direction is worth more than a giant leap in the wrong direction or in the direction that is not getting you closer to your desired outcome, to your goal in life. He said no excuses, only execution. No more excuses. And an excuse and a reason are the same thing. A reason that you cannot do something you could easily make a reason that you can. So why not affirm the positive? This is the question. Asking, how can I make the greatest impact? What can I do? And understanding that there's always more. Just like our friend here, hey there, Miss Mason Rose. <laughs> She's over there making impact. Everything you do is a deposit into greatness. That was, that was major. Think of all of your efforts, all of your actions, all of the seemingly insignificant things that you do each day, like drops in a bucket. You read 
a few pages of a book. You do some meditation. You do some breath work. You say some affirmations. And you just keep building yourself up, right? Drops in the bucket. And after a while, what's going to happen? Just like a leaky roof. This bucket soon becomes overflowing with water. Overflowing. And it might not take as long as you think. With consistency and patience, anything can be accomplished. In fact, one of the keynote speakers today said, consistency is the only cheat code. Just be consistent, you know? And be consistent, not worrying about when or how long it will take. Focusing on the process and not just the results. Keep learning, growing, and constantly making adjustments. So yeah, there was another uh, speaker. This one was a lady named Donnie Wiggins. And she talked about how to be a success magnet. She gave a mantra, uh, several mantras actually. And uh, she talked about how the success that you desire is connected to your intention. How can we be more intentional in life? What can you be intentional about? And don't, don't be shy. Let me see here. What can we be more intentional about in life? Understanding that nothing without intention, you know? What we focus on expands. What you focus on the longest grows the strongest, whatever that is. Nothing without intention. So when you're on the road and you're driving, of course you can have shiny object syndrome, right? in your business and life, looking at everything. But if you're always looking at the trees, looking at the monuments, looking at the signposts, looking at the other cars, the other vehicles, the other people, are you focused on the road? I mean, where are you going, right? So this is a reminder for me to be more intentional, to focus on where I'm going and not just on the things that are nice to see but if that's not where I'm going, then is that my focus? She said, fear the moment that you think you've done enough. There's a moment that people have when they relax, they chill, they settle, and it's okay. You can settle, you can say, okay, I'm good where I am. I like it here, I'm fine, I don't need any more. I don't need to go any higher, I'm good right here. And you can post up, pitch your tent, say cool. But there are others who say there is no traffic when you go the extra mile. You hear no more honking, no more, you know, people, you know, in your way, nobody when you go the extra mile because most often people don't go that extra mile. So the difference between ordinary and extraordinary is just that little extra. And you can be that little extra in whatever you do. Always leave the stage empty, she said, making sure that you are able to pour something into somebody else, pour something into the people who are watching you. Leave the stage empty. That was interesting. Success happens on purpose. Somebody said that, uh, what is the opposite? of an accident. Purpose. If you don't do something on by accident, you do it on purpose. He said be purposeful. Live a purpose-driven life. That most people don't do what they want. Why is it that most people don't do what they want? Can somebody tell me? Why is it most people don't do what they want in life? Anybody? She said, because they don't know what they want. 
I mean, think about that. When is the last time you got clear? When is the last time you were focused and had more clarity over what you actually wanted? And not what the world says you should want or what the world says you should need or what the world says you should have, but you. You're the one that sees you when you look in the mirror. No one else is inside your body. No one else is inside your mind. No one else has your soul. No one else has your spirit. No one else has your heart. So the reason why she said most people don't do what they want is simply they don't know what they want. So write it down. When you design it on paper, you achieve it on purpose. Write it down. What do you want? What do I want? If you want your dream car, be specific, you know? How does it look like on the outside, the inside? What is the color? How does it drive? How does it feel? Visualize that. Paint that picture. What about your dream home? Or do you want to travel? Do you want to be a digital nomad? I wrote down in my journal years ago, I will travel the world and inspire people in different countries. I am location independent, right? I have several online businesses and they are operated by capable individuals. I wanted at a certain point to be hands off, to be able to live my life and have time freedom, but to still be able to do what I love, which is to inspire someone who may be watching me, to inspire someone who may be down, to inspire someone and encourage someone who may not believe in themselves. Because sometimes we need someone to believe in us until our belief kicks in. Have you ever had that someone for you? Who's been that someone in your life? Someone who believed in you so strongly that finally, one day, your belief kicked in and you said, I can do this because he or she believed in me. Ah, interesting. Full moon transmission. I like that. I like that, Tanya. <laughs> So, is my vision clear? Is your vision clear? And have you cleared enough space in your life to allow your vision to happen? That's a good one. Think about the clutter that you might have around you. If you have clutter in your surroundings, there are clutter in your inner surroundings, right? If your environment is noisy, there's visual noise. This was a problem for me for so long. Having visual noise in my environment was mental noise in my inner environment. Anything you see externally is affecting your internal world. So they say a disorderly space is the sign of a disorderly mind. An orderly space is the sign of an orderly mind. Getting clear, having vision, you know? So, when you create the space, you allow for more things to come in. Like with fasting, we create the space, we lighten up, and with more light, it comes more light streaming through the body. Like today I was on a cloud. I still haven't eaten, haven't had anything to drink, any water, nothing since I've been here. And I've just been absolutely like, <laughs> enjoying myself. Last night, I walked the streets here in Atlanta and I felt like I was on a cloud. I was like walking on air. I felt like I had all the energy in the world. I must have walked like five miles from the movie theater all the way back to my hotel. And it's like, dang, when you clear space, you allow for more space. You allow for more light to come in. It's amazing. She said, some people don't support you because they see you stop and start. When you get off the track, right? When you were going on the track, but then you got off. You decided to take a break. You decided, you know what? 
I'll come back to this endeavor, whatever endeavor is important for you. You said, you know what, this is important, I want to achieve this, but I'm gonna put this on the back burner for now. I'm gonna put this to the side for now. I'm gonna focus on something else. And that some people aren't moved, some people don't support us because they see us stop and start, stop and start. We're doing this, we do that, we do this, we do that. We stop and start, we're not consistent. So we don't inspire that consistent support from others because we are not consistent. We don't inspire that belief that we're looking for in others because we don't believe in ourselves to a certain extent in the dreams that we have for us. Clearing out your mental enemy. She said the biggest enemy is the inner me. Don't allow your enemy to be your inner me, your innermost thoughts, your negative self-talk, your disbelief, your doubt. You know, doubt can kill a dream faster than a speeding bullet. It doesn't take much to stop you in your tracks, to derail you in life. And the opposite of traction is distraction. What are we distracting ourselves with? What are we distracted by? So don't allow your inner me to be the enemy. Never be afraid to be authentic. Never be afraid to be who you are in life. Understanding that who you are is valuable. Who you are is valid. If you have a voice, you have something to say. And someone wants to hear, someone needs to hear what you have to say, your message. There's someone out there, more than one, with ears to hear you. They've been waiting on you, and you may not even realize it. When you raise your voice, when you speak your truth, and when you shine your light, you give others permission to do the same. So who do you think you're not? Do you think you're unqualified to speak your truth? Do you think you're unqualified to improve someone else's quality of being, quality of life? Do you think you're unqualified to help someone? To offer support? To offer a word that could lift someone out, out of the muck? If you've done it for you, you can do it for someone else. You're already qualified. So never be afraid to be authentic. In fact, the easiest way to stand out, the easiest way, the easiest way to be authentic. Does anyone know? Comment down below if you know. What's the easiest way to stand out from the crowd to be authentic in this life? Let us know if you if you know. Anyone, anybody? <laughs> I don't want to just be preaching. I'd love to, to interact with you if you'd like to interact. Well, if you didn't know, the single most easiest way to stand out in life is to be yourself, to be who you already are. You weren't born to be average. You weren't born to be ordinary. You stand out just by being you. Exactly, Tanya. There you go. There you go, brother. Be yourself. Perfect. You already got it. You have everything you need within you now. It's always been there. You know? I could say something and touch someone. You could say the exact same thing and touch someone else. Do you know that people resonate with us differently? You know? And all you have to do is speak. You don't have to be an expert. You don't have to be a natural born genius. Forget perfection. Don't wait for the perfect moment. Take the moment and make it perfect for you. Just speak. Punt fear and press record, we used to say. Just press the button. Be you, be yourself. And you will attract and pull into your gravitational field everyone and everything that is meant for you to evolve, to excel, and to elevate in life. So be encouraged. If I can't hear your voice, 
I can't hear your message. You know, you might have things that you can offer the world, right? But think, if you're not voicing it, if you're not speaking it, who's gonna know? I mean, the level of telepathy is not yet back at, at the way it once was. I think, you know, of course, there's so many people that are telepathic and they understand and they can, yeah, I'm sure they can hear you. But a lot of people aren't. They can't read your mind. They need to hear your voice. So imagine yourself having a, a billboard, right? There's a billboard behind you at all times. And when you don't speak your truth, or when you don't say that you have something available, maybe a service, a business, an idea, anything that you have in your mind up here, if you don't voice it, if you don't speak it, who's gonna be able to help if they see a blank billboard, just a blank canvas? They walk up to the billboard and instead of sticky notes and thumbtacks, it's a blank billboard, it's nothing there. So they're just gonna move on and walk on to the next one, right? But what if you do voice, if you do say, you know what, here's what I do. Here's what I have available. And that's a sticky note on the billboard. That's a thumbtack on the billboard. And when they walk past your billboard, they see it. They say, oh, you offer this? Oh, you know what, I know somebody that's doing this. Have you ever thought about doing that? Oh, I know somebody I can connect you with. Oh, I know somebody, oh, you would love this person. They know all about this. You two are doing the same thing. Wouldn't it be cool? Connections, light workers out here networking. And all you have to do is just speak it, believe it, receive it. Believe in your ability to figure things out. Understand that it's not for lack of resources, but lack of resourcefulness. Okay, you might think that you don't have the resources, but are you resourceful? Can you be resourceful in life? Entrepreneurs, the things that we do, we realize that where there's a will, there's a way, always. There's never a point where we give up and we say, I've tried it all, I've tried everything. No, there's always more. There's always something that you're not seeing, something that you haven't done yet. There's always a needle in a haystack, always something that has not yet been revealed to you. So understanding that perhaps there's just something you're not seeing. But don't fake it till you make it. Be it till you see it. And it will be revealed to you. It's not about how you will do it. It is who you will attract. Sometimes when you're pressing forward, when you're pressing on, you attract individuals into your life that are able to assist you. And it's a wonderful thing to be able to be amongst people that can assist you and people that are there to help guide and to help lift you up. Because the only reason you should look down on a person is if you're lifting them up, right? So somebody might have the things that could help you get to the next level. But if you're too prideful, you might never ask. And if you don't ask, how can you receive what you don't ask for? Get deeper rooted in the things that you're doing. Understanding there's always a way to go deeper. Asking questions. You get good answers when you ask good questions. This was David Shands, yeah. He was talking about consistency, asking questions, and just understanding that the things we do every day count. So many messages by wonderful beings. Ah, here's a joke for you. <laughs> How much does a chimney cost? <laughs> a little kid said this today. 
a little kid came on the stage and he said, how much does a chimney cost? Go ahead and guess. <laughs> I don't know why I got a kick out of this. The answer is nothing. It's on the house. <laughs> why did I think that was, that was funny. There is safety in a multitude of counsel. You know, they say that we are the sum average or the sum total of the five individuals that we have around us. Who do you keep around you? You know, the people I keep around me in here, most loving individuals like Tanya, individuals, you know, most loving individuals like Jason, Tamika, Tuche, George. Hey, Louis, thank you for joining. Hey, Carl, much love. Who do you keep around you? Who's influencing you, impacting you? Your vibration, your state of being, what frequency are you in when you are around others? Do they elevate you or do they pull you down? Do they propel you forward or do they push you back? What is the company you keep? Someone said, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. I have many new friends today, many new acquaintances, but still I keep my circle very small. And those people who are in close contact with me, they know who they are. But it's because you gotta be cognizant of your energy and aware of the energy around you. And when there are certain energies around you, it can elevate you or it can pull you down. It is said that if someone does not want to go up or elevate their state of being, if someone does not want to improve their quality of life, if someone does not want to bring themselves to a more positive mind state, there's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can do. You gotta let it go. Stop trying to, you know, immerse yourself in that person's life in a way that will cause them to resent you. If they're not looking to go there, they're not gonna go there. It has to come from within. But vice versa is not the case. Other people can pull you down. Other people can bring you to a lower vibration, to a lower frequency if you allow it. So be aware of your energy, be aware of your mind state, and be aware of where you wish to be in life. And always being grateful for the people in your circle who are propelling you forward and not pulling you down. Ha, this is a good one. So he said, uh, nobody cares, he said. Nobody cares. He realized in his life when he saw Eric Thomas deliver a, a wonderful speech, you know, the speech that everybody knows when they see Eric Thomas, how bad do you want it? When you want success, as bad as you are willing to breathe, as bad as you want oxygen, then you'll be successful, right? And he delivered this wonderful speech to this classroom, had everybody on their feet given a standing ovation. And the very next day, his manager, the guy called up this other school to have him come and talk as a motivational speaker. And the school said, nah, we're not really feeling it. Maybe next time. Right? And he realized in that moment, nobody cares. They, they didn't see that speech, or maybe they did, but who cares, right? And now today, the guy is making 80,000 after speaking 40 minutes. He goes to, he flies to a place, speaks for 40 minutes and makes $80,000. And this is the guy they turned down for free. He was gonna speak at the school for free, for nothing. And they turned him down. And the guy realized nobody cares. One of the best things that I ever understood when it came to putting myself out there when it came to speaking my truth 
documenting my journey and raising my voice is that the judgment that allowed me to be fearful or the judgment that allowed me to be critical of myself was not like I thought it was. Everyone was just living inside themselves. They were thinking about themselves. They weren't thinking about me. Nobody cares. Right? You slip, you fall. They see when you fall. They also see when you get back up. But if you're thinking that people are criticizing you as much as you are criticizing yourself, don't let that stop you. The truth is, people don't care as much as we think they do about the things that we do. So you might as well do what you want. You might as well do what sets your soul on fire. You might as well do what lights you up in life. Because no one really cares. They're all just thinking about themselves. They're not in your body. You are. So, if you feel a calling to do something in life, do it. He said, Go with your gift. What comes easy to you is hard for most. There's something that you do that's easy to you, but hard to other people. Something that you do that comes so naturally, you could easily do it. But other people, it's very difficult for them. What is that something? What do you feel like is your gift, your calling, your vocation in life? Whenever your greatest gladness meets one of the world's greatest needs, you found something. You found something that you can do. And you can find fulfillment without needing to be paid for it. And when you find that thing, money will come. They say you give value, money comes. You give a lot of value, a lot of money comes. You give so much value, you cannot stop the money from coming. Because what is money? Energy. What are you? Energy. So money is you. I mean, money is you. It's just in another form. A tree that you see is you. It's expressing itself in another form. You are that universal energy vibrating at a certain rate. You are the cosmos expressing itself in a unique form. So what is money? Money is you. You are it. It is not something that is like out there, you needing to work for it, attain it, like do all these things, struggle for it, work tirelessly, days on end, labor. You don't have to chase what you can attract. When you know who you are and what you are, you will never be found wanting because all will be attracted. All will be yours when you realize who you are in life. There is no lack. There is no scarcity. Not for the one who realizes where they come from. Stick to your system. And knowing what your end game is to know how to build find your secret superpower oh I love this one so Carlos CJ Quinney he wrote a book called find your secret superpower I love this so imagine you're a kid right and this kid, this kid needed to get home. And he was lost in this jungle, lost in this forest, but he needed to get back home. And so he saw a bunny rabbit and he asked the bunny rabbit, we'll call him Billy the bunny. <laughs> I'm just making up this name. And he asked Billy the bunny, he said, hey Billy, can you help me get home? And Billy said, oh no, I can't help you get home. I'm just, you know, a short little bunny rabbit. like." I'm short, I got these, you know, these little thumpers, these little legs, like, and I just hop around, like, what, what could I do to help you get home? I can't do that. He said, but, but what about this big old bush over here? I'm sure you could hop up and down and like, 
you know, see what you see over this bush, right? And so Billy, Billy the bunny said, okay, well, I guess I'll try. So he hopped up and hopped up and looked over the bush and then he saw there was someone on side of the bush. Oh, Gary the gorilla's over there. Yeah, I don't see your house, but I do see Gary the gorilla. He's right there. So the boy called out, hey, Gary. <laughs> Gary the gorilla comes over and he says, hey, Gary, can you get me home? I got to go home. I got to find my house. Can you get me back home? And Gary the gorilla says, no, no, I can't get you home, right? I'm just big and clunky. I got these muscles. I just walk around and clomp around. I can't get you home. I, what can I do? But he says, but Gary, with those big muscles, I'm sure you could knock down these trees that are in our way, right? Or knock down these brushes, you know, knock down these things to, for us to see farther, right? He said, okay, let me try. So Gary the gorilla starts knocking things down and their path gets a little more clear. They keep moving. They bump into this body of water and they see Cory the crocodile. And Cory the crocodile is in the water and they say, hey, Cory, I got to get home. Can you can you bring me home? Can you help me get back home? And Cory the crocodile says, oh, no. No, these eyes, these eyes are bad. I can't really see out these eyes. Plus, I got these little small little arms. I'm just in this this body of water. I mean, I'm just swimming out here. Like, what, what can I do? How can I help you get home? Nah, man, you're looking for somebody else. But he says, wait, 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 wait. Just wait a minute. Corey, couldn't you help us swim across this body of water? I mean, I could hop on you. You could help me get across, right? He said, well, yeah, I guess. I guess. So he hops on Corey, the crocodile gets past, right? Long story short, he meets several animals, right? He meets Gina the giraffe, who has a low self-esteem. She thinks her neck is too long. She's too, you know, too big. But Gina the giraffe looks over, you know, the ridge and sees uh, <laughs> Benny the bird. And this little tiny bird thinks that it is too small and can't help him get home. The bird has, you know, these little wings, but the bird is able to fly all the way up high and see his house and get him back home. What lesson did we learn? It doesn't matter what you think you lack. It doesn't matter what you think you cannot do. It doesn't matter all the weaknesses that you can come up with. There are certain things that you are strong in. There are certain strengths that you have. There are certain gifts you've been given to give back to the world. What is your secret superpower? What is something that you can do that no one else can? What is something that comes easy for you, but is difficult for others? Find that something, and you've found a gift. There's always something that you can give. Always. You are never without. So that was powerful for me to understand. Finding our secret superpower. Understanding that. find it we have found something that we can use not only to help ourselves but to assist someone else in life don't compare oh comparison is the thief of all joy yeah comparison we do that a lot especially here on social media we compare we compare not getting into that comparison game can bring back so much joy into your life. Able to let go of the comparisons, right? To dream of the person you wish to be is to waste the one you are. You are already wonderful, right? So don't compare. You'll have much more joy. Find out, let me see, if people are on there. Oh, educate, encourage, and empower. Yeah. How can we either educate, encourage, or empower somebody? These are the things. Blessings don't come to you. 
they flow through you. You are the conduit. I learned this from one of my good friends, uh, Earl Kapule. You are the conduit in life. You are a channel, allowing these blessings to flow through you, allowing the message to flow through you. These things don't come to you, they flow through you, like inspiration. To be in spirit is to be inspired. Inspiration, like the breath. <sighs> when you are inspired, these things flow through you. You are an open channel, an open vessel, a conduit to allow the light to stream through. How can you be that way for yourself and for others? So blessings don't come to you, they flow through you. Ah, <laughs> every hero can become a villain. Yeah, that's a good one too. He said he learned that from Batman. So these were some lessons that I got today from the conference. Opportunity loves preparation. Mm -hmm. It takes pressure to reveal what you are really prepared for. Isn't it so? So yeah, what pressure can we be thankful for? In order for the oil to be extracted from the olive, it must be crushed. If you're not enjoying, who else will? If you don't believe, who else will? Yeah. Insecurities are not your identity. I like that one. I like that. Insecurities are not your identity. Your past does not determine your future. You know? As long as there's life, it's your turn. Yes. Carly says, Carly says everyone has a purpose. I believe that. Nice. George says it's up to you to find it. Socrates, wonderful. I love that. Thank you all for those quotes. Repetition deepens the impression. Yeah. Repetition is the mother of skill. It's the mother of learning. Consistency is the DNA of mastery. They say up until like age seven, we've been like SpongeBob. We've been just absorbing. Everything's been going straight into our subconscious. But after that age, the language of the subconscious mind is repetition. Whatever you are repeating with your mouth, Whatever you are seeing repetitively, whatever you are hearing repetitively, these things are influencing you at the subconscious level. And the real kicker is, it's below your level of conscious awareness that is governing you. They've even done studies on the mind. They've hooked up nodes to people's brain, you know, and they've seen that right before they grab something, right before they make a decision, right before they do anything, there is something that happens on the monitor, on the brain, that lights up a certain center, an area in the brain that lights up before they even make the decision. So it is the root that affects the fruit. We are operating at the branch level on the tree. So that's where the leaves are. That's where the fruit is. That's where we operate. That's the conscious mind. But everything else is at the root level. That's the subconscious. It's below the level of our conscious awareness. So that's the real kicker. Before you do anything, it's already made. The decision is already done. We think we're in total control. We think we have control over the things that we do, but really, it's already been programmed. This is why repetition is so important. Repetitively and repeatedly soaking in knowledge, absorbing in knowledge that is going to move the needle in your life. What are you listening to consistently? What are you watching consistently? What are you saying consistently? What are you thinking consistently? These things are literally governing your direction in life. 
without you knowing it. Because it's the root of the tree. It's what we don't see underneath that is responsible and is bearing fruit for everything that we do see above. So in order to influence your life in the most profound way, change what you do consciously and slowly but surely the subconscious mind will get the message. And once the subconscious mind has the memo, and you'll know it has the memo, when you are able to naturally take inspired action in a direction. Do you know that there are people that say there are no opportunities? People who say there's no hope. People who say there's nothing I can do. They have every reason and excuse not to start, not to go after it, not to dream bigger, not to do better. And you know that there are people living right next to them that think the opposite. And they might be in the same country, the same location, same place, two people side by side in completely different worlds. You ever heard that? Oh, he's in his own world. Oh, she's in her own world over there. Because our mentality creates our reality. Perspective. The world changes when you change. If you don't change, nothing changes. But once you change, everything changes. And it's not really what we look at that matters. It's what we see. Two people can be looking at the same painting. One of them says, oh, it's ugly. I don't see it. I don't like it. The other one says, what? It's beautiful, right? Like, look at the detail. Look at that. Look at this art. This is art. <laughs> Perspective. One person can say, oh, man, it's raining outside. Man, I'm not going anywhere. The other person said, oh, it's raining outside. I'm about to go dancing, right? It's a beautiful day. Ah, oh, look at the clouds, man. The sun's not even out. It's so gloomy. Oh my gosh, look at that. Wow, look at that. Look at all the clouds. Right? Perspective. So, understanding that your perspective, how you deem things to be makes all the difference. And not everyone else. Tell triggers. Let me see. Take your pain and turn it into purpose. So anything that has happened to you in life and you've considered it to be painful, you can switch that. You can do a reframe. You can be an alchemist, transmuting that energy, turning lead into gold, making the best out of even the worst situations. Turn your pain into purpose. Some people allow their pain and the situations and the events that happen to them in life to pummel them, right? And to punish them and put them in a state of inactivity, of inaction, of melancholy, of victimization. While the next person will use that pain and that same pain will allow them to be victorious, will allow them to triumph, will give them the fuel that they need for their inner fire, kindling that inner flame that gives them the motivation to go on. Two people, two pains. One was pulled back, the other propelled forward. Two people came from the same father, right? And one of them and their father had a drinking habit. He was an alcoholic. One of these sons went on to be an alcoholic. They asked him, why do you drink so much? 
because of my father. The other son did not become an alcoholic, never touched a drop in his life. They asked him, what kept you away from the bottle? Because of my father. Both of them had the same reason. Both of them had the same pain. Both of them saw the same things. Both of them went in completely different directions. So what has happened to you could have happened for you. Your pain, your insecurities are not your identity. That is not who you are. The things that have influenced you and impacted you in life, they aren't you. You decide who you are. You determine where you're going. You decide your future. I seen a movie called Terminator. The lady said, there is no fate but what we make. Do you believe that? Do you believe there is no fate but what you make? That you are not fated to a lackluster destiny? That you determine that and no one else can choose that for you? Do you believe that? You truly believe? Les Brown said, you are born for greatness, but you are not destined for greatness. The choice is up to you. He said, the hardest thing I ever had to do in life, or the hardest thing I ever did, was to believe that I could do it. That was so powerful for me to understand the belief was harder than the actual doing. Do you even believe it's possible? Start there. Oh, let's. Louis, Louis says, you once said something like the conscious mind and the question. Oh yeah, maybe, maybe you're saying the conscious mind commands, the subconscious mind obeys. Yeah, I remember that. So the conscious mind commands and the subconscious mind obeys, right? So when you've done something enough times consciously, it weaves its way into your subconscious. You've ever been driving a car and you're occupied, you're singing your favorite song, you're dancing, you're smiling, you're enjoying yourself, right? You're not really paying attention to the road. You're not really focused like that. You might even be on the phone with somebody. Shoot, you might even be texting, heaven forbid, right? <laughs> but you still make it to your destination. How did you do that? As if in a daze you wake up in the parking lot of your destination but you were occupied on the road. You weren't really consciously driving. So who was driving? Who was the driving force in your life? The subconscious mind. It is the subconscious mind that was driving, right? That was changing lanes. That was putting on the blinker without you knowing it. That was stopping at the red light automatically, right? the subconscious. So when we understand how to tap into the subconscious, it's game over. Because you're tapping into something that is governing right now. Are you aware of your left big toe? Are you aware of the blood that is being pumped into your left big toe right now as you listen to this? You're not you're not thinking about doing that, right? You're not thinking about having your heart pump. You're not thinking about your liver, the functions of your spleen, your kidneys. Are you thinking about all that right now? No. But guess what's governing that? See, these are the things that we don't think about. When you tap into the things that are governing that, you're tapping into something that can guide you to wherever you want to go in life. It is no coincidence that you've heard people, maybe artists in the industry, rappers, writing down lyrics, 
that might have been negative, casting a shadow of the things they did while they were in the hood, while they were in the trap, the people they were around, talking about things with malicious intent, right? And then what happens? Certain things happen to certain individuals. Sometimes individuals commit suicide, and you look back at their lyrics and you see in their lyrics right there, they were writing them down, they were reciting them, they were saying them over and over again. Why must life be like this? I hate my life. I wish this, that, right? Maybe I'm better off dead. All these things that they're writing. Is it ever a wonder? They were being directed to the outcome that they had designed. So whatever we design on paper, we will achieve it on purpose. So you might as well design something good on paper to achieve it on purpose. Write down positive things in your life, things that you want, things that you are looking forward to, things that you already have, things that you are grateful for. Write down in gratitude, write down in love, you know? Write down your goals, your ambitions. Write down the things you want to make manifest. And when these things happen, you'll be the only one who is not surprised. Everyone else will be like, what? How? You'd be like, I already saw it. I saw it here. I wrote it here. Anything you confirm or anything you affirm in your inner reality, you'll see confirmed in your outer reality. So write it down, design it on purpose, you will achieve it that way. Uh, let me tell you how... Oh, we're almost done. Okay, just a, just a couple more here. Confidence is contagious, yeah. Don't wait for the world to recognize your greatness. Oh, I love that. You don't have to be great to start, but you have to start to be great. Oh, we got a question. Is that, hey, hey, Melissa. So Melissa asks, what do you think on Kundalini awakening and blockages in the chakras? Yeah, great question. So I'll come from my own experience because I can speak on me. Um, I had my first and my only ever Kundalini awakening after a series of uh, Qigong. So I was in California. I was in a studio apartment in downtown Los Angeles. And I had been consistently every single day without fail doing Qigong for at least 20 minutes a day, consistently. Then I got to the point where 20 minutes was too little. Now I could hold the positions and do the forms for longer than it stretched to 30 minutes. Then it stretched eventually to 45 minutes. And it was until I got to this point where I did Qigong for like about an hour. And something in my body clicked. My body came into alignment. And that's the only way I can explain it because after I left that apartment, everywhere I walked, everywhere I went, everywhere I drove, it was like I had turned an off switch on. I had, I had literally, I did this. I turned on the light in my body. And there was this electric feeling of bliss running up and down my spine, up and down, up and down, up and down. And it was like nothing I'd ever felt before. It was like an energy orgasm. That's how I can put it. It was like I was like elated. I was on cloud nine all day long. And I never knew that I could feel that with energy. And I can only say that these blockages, these obstructions in my body had been 
broken down to the point where this light just started to stream through the vessel and whatever like they say you know the crown this was just overflowing just coming out the crown right that was an experience I'll never forget you know I've heard Esau the God uh, shout out to Mark Inglis I've, I've heard him talk about a similar story you know where he finally felt the energy when he felt this blissful energy I felt it just like that just the same and I never knew that the body could feel like that without like an actual orgasm without a sexual experience with another human being I didn't know I could feel like that on my own like by myself like I don't need anybody to feel like this I can just work with the energy it was like you know so yeah the kundalini is real kundalini awakening is real and um you know if you ever watched avatar the last airbender guru guru patik there's a scene with ang and guru patik who shows him about the chakras in the body look up just type in i guess ang and the guru or avatar the last airbender chakras explanation and they give a great breakdown they give one of the best i've ever seen on tv in fact that's probably the only one i've ever seen that was the cartoon that cartoon that animated series they were given game like they gave so many gems i don't people so many people still don't understand like how much they gave us with that show show is timeless i can still go back and it's all on netflix now you can watch like every episode and it's timeless still rewatchable to this day but he talked about these pools of energy just like pools of water and sometimes they get clogged like a little moss here a little seed weed there and if you pull out the moss, you pull out the seaweed, you pull out the branches that are obstructing these channels or chakras, then the water is allowed to flow. And it flows naturally, easily and freely. Now my mentor, Eli Tom Elamin, some people go from the top down, he goes from the bottom up. Eli Tom talks about if you take care of the first three, the root, the sacral and the solar plexus if you just take care of the first three the last four take care of themselves right that's what he says all you got to do is take care of the root the sacral and the solar everything else is going to take care of itself so i started taking care of that i started taking care of what i consumed what i put into my body you know, I started taking care of that sexual energy, right? Which is creative energy anyways. All sexual energy is creative energy. It's all one. So now being able to use that energy in different ways, not having that energy dissipate, not using that energy destructively, but using it constructively. The energy is running and the energy is high. So thank you so much, Melissa, for that question. Yeah, when you feel it, you know it. Right, Louis? When you feel it, you know. It's very hard to explain. <laughs> but I was so emotional, like, tears was, was, a, was trying to come down my eyes when I felt that. Because I was like, what? How in the world did I never know I could feel this good? after a meditation like after working with the energy i never knew i could feel that good and it wasn't with any outside substance nothing external right i wasn't drinking to feel that way i wasn't smoking to feel that way i didn't take any drops of acid or any mushrooms or anything like that it was all just energy work so this is no judgment for anybody who enjoys you know exploring the realms of different you know different things to each their own but you know, I've done my share, but for me, purity is the new high. Purity, that's, the, that's the, when you high on your own supply with the breath, with the energy, there's no feeling like it because it's autonomy, right? It's self-sufficiency. It's saying, I don't need this to feel like that. I don't need that to feel like this. I have everything I need within me now. 
a lot of the, a lot of times we're just looking for the feeling like Neville Goddard says the feeling is the secret people think they need money like oh I need more money I need more money no you're not really wanting the money if you were stranded on an island and there was no one around nothing to buy nothing to transact nothing to trade what would the use of money be would you still want money if you were stranded on an island that that didn't require money would you still want it I mean think about it you don't want the money you want the things that money can buy you want the lifestyle that's what you're looking for and really even further than that past the lifestyle you want the feeling that the lifestyle can bring you that's what we're looking for the feeling and when you understand that you don't have to wait on money to have that feeling that you can have that feeling whenever you like you can have that feeling today it is liberating it is freedom because you know you don't have to wait on something external to give you what you can give yourself internally and ironically in a paradoxical way when you allow yourself to feel the feeling today you attract those things anyways they run to you they come to you a lot faster because you are not chasing them that's the irony that's the real kicker when you feel the feeling of what you desire the feeling of what you think you lack the feeling of what you think you might have whenever money comes your way if money just falls into your lap and you think your life is going to change it's not going to change it's going to just emphasize and accentuate who you are already if you were a giving person before you got more money you're still going to be a giving person when you receive more money if you were saying to yourself oh when i get a million dollars then i'm going to give right oh i'll give to this charity that charity i'll give to the homeless i'll do this i'll do that i'll do all these things when i get the money no you're going to do exactly what you're doing right now you're just going to do it faster and more when you get more money so the feeling is the secret don't worry about all that other stuff worry about you how do you feel no how do you really feel and if you can feel that way without it when it comes you'll already be content it won't have such a giant shift on your life because you were already good you were already happy so it's not going to bring you happiness it's not going to give you happiness because it's not going to give you something you didn't already have if you already have it then when it leaves it's not taking your happiness along with it it's not taking your peace along with it it's not taking your joy along with it when it comes it comes if it goes it goes and you are not swayed either way allowing you to find liberation within your vibration and when there is no lack no scarcity when there is abundance prosperity opulence within it will find you so don't worry about money money will find you don't worry about success success will find you work on yourself sharpen yourself work on your mind your heart your spirit everything you desire everything you're looking for is looking for you so my friend i think we can stop there one more thing a gentleman said your purpose is at the intersection of your talent and your testimony i'll let that marinate i like that your purpose is at the intersection of your talent and your testimony Wow. Powerful messages today. So thank you to all the people over at 
Next Level Speakers Academy. That's where we were today. Next Level Speakers. And we were checking them out today. So today's been an awesome day, my friend. <laughs> been highlighting all through this book as we've been writing in this book. And oh, wow, gorgeous. Take a look at the city here. Night on the town. We just over here in Georgia. Georgia. What did, what did Luda say? We on the ground in Georgia. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, Haruka's asking... Are you talking about your kundalini experience? Yeah, I was. I was before. Hey, I'm glad, Melissa. I'm glad you received something. Uh, <laughs> oh, I haven't scrolled down here. Wow. Yes, we are enough. Yes, we have always been enough. I love that. Thank you. Thank you for speaking that. Speak it, believe it, receive it. Marco says the feeling creates the circumstance. The circumstance doesn't create the feeling. Come on, somebody. Woo! Exactly. Oh, Brick said, where did you learn Qigong? Wait a minute. Brick, is that uh, Chanel? I wonder. Where did you learn Qigong? In Cali? Yeah, I learned it from uh, Ellie Tom. Ellie Tom taught me. Louis, much love to you, brother. Hey, Rebecca, thanks for joining. Hey, Victoria. Hey, man, we on top of the world, brother. If you can see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hand. I had to see it up here before it became... Shoot, what floor am I? I'm on the 12th floor up in this building. This building I'm in... It's called the, ooh, look at the moon. Ooh, you see that? Ooh, come on, baby. I see you, girl. Oh, yeah. That's the moon, huh? It's a full moon, y'all. So much love. So, thank you for joining. Thank you for being here. This has just been a recap for today's conference. We got two more days left. So today was the very first day of the conference. Next Level Speakers Academy. We out here in Atlanta, Georgia. <laughs> and um, we'll be coming back with some more tomorrow. I'm going to be taking some more notes. And uh, I'll do another live session for you. Just for you. <laughs> and um, yeah. Thank you for so much love. Thank you for all the hearts, the likes, the shares. Share this with someone if you feel they would gain value from this. If you're watching this on the replay, tag someone below and uh, let them hear this. Definitely ding the bell if you want to be notified for any of these live sessions. And check out the Open Palm Podcast. Ooh, I got to upload my episode tonight. Ooh, thank you. The Open Palm Podcast. It, the link is in the bio for your listening pleasure, your daily inspiration. You already know it. And you know this, man! <laughs> you know it so much appreciation thank you thank you for being as always much love make the rest of your life and the breath of your life the best of your life my friend nothing to it but to do it so let's get to it all right take care <laughs>